Well, when I first published the, um, or when when there was a first uh, widely read publication about my quantity theory of disaggregate credit, that was in the Economist. Mm -hmm. In June 1993, um, it's a weekly paper, paper. I can't remember which date exactly, but it is a June June 93 issue of the Economist. I'm sure one can find it on the internet. In some of my references yes. quoted, and, and they wrote in the Economics Focus entirely on on my my paper and my approach. Of course, with Japanese data, it was the 90s. Mm -hmm. but very positively and clearly pointing out that that's a new approach which explains a lot and bank credit creation and, and should be considered more by economists, this approach, and should be used by policymakers. Mm -hmm. So after this came out, because economists is widely read, particularly by central bankers and, and the like, mm -hmm. I got letters from JP Morgan, Rothschild, all sorts of big banks, private banks, but also from central banks. Quite a few central banks wrote to me, and particularly the Fed was very active. And and because remember, this is pre-internet. Yeah. This came out in 1993, and they had to write to me to get the actual paper. I had published it, presented it at at uh, several conferences, but you know, it wasn't like you could go to a website and get the uh, download the paper. Yeah. So at least the advantage was I could see who was interested in this, and the Federal Reserve was very interested. Um. The, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System wrote to me, senior economist uh, Dale Henderson, and, and asked for the paper. And he said, you know, and there was a fax, a phone call, everything. This is really urgent because a senior board member of the Board of Governors wants to read the paper. So it was, it was veiled, senior board member. Well, OK, this could be the senior board member, <laughs> Alan Greenspan, or not. You never know. Yeah. Uh, but when I then... So I, you know, send them the paper, didn't hear back. This is 93. And then when I, <clears throat> two years later, 95, I was then chief economist at Jardin Fleming Securities in Tokyo, uh -huh. but on a, on a roadshow to the largest U.S. institutional investors, um, all the big funds in, in various places in the U.S. And as I was going through Washington, I set up a meeting at the Fed as well, and I then asked, uh, oh, by the way, you know, two years ago when we had this exchange of, um, of e well, not emails, faxes and phone calls, um, who was that senior board member who wanted to read my paper? Oh, that was Alan, of course. <laughs> oh, okay, that's good to know. Because then another two years later, so now we're in 1997, um, and, and, you know, the, the World Bank and IMF annual meetings, Every other year, they take place in some international location, um, taking turns with Washington. And so this happened to be in, in Hong Kong, because my company, Jardin Fleming, headquartered in Hong Kong, um, of course, then was giving a big dinner event for you know, all these globally assembled bankers and central bankers. It's, you know, it's a big annual uh, bash for all the bankers. And because my company was hosting this dinner, I, you know, I got myself also um, invited and uh, I was looking out and there he was, Alan Greenspan. OK, of course, always crowds around him. Everyone wants to have a piece of the cake and, and talk to him because, you know, these were the days he was he was ready, uh, the maestro. And um, and of course, in this bankers event, you know, he, he was probably the number one figure. But there was a moment, for some reason, there was a lull, and he was standing there on his own. So, okay, that's, you know, just going to walk up. I've got a chat up line. I'll, you know, I know he read one of my papers, but obviously that's four years ago. So, of course, he, you know, wouldn't remember that. So I'll remind him of that, and then we can talk about my paper and, and things. So I walked up and, according to plan, said, may I introduce myself? My name is Richard Werner. Um, I believe you've read some of my research. Now, I expected him to say, you know, oh, really? Like, what's that? But he said, Richard Werner, credit creation. Yeah, I remember the paper on Japan. I read it twice. And The Economist and then the actual paper. <laughs> <laughs> and I was uh, somewhat speechless. Uh, well, I mean, he said all the things I wanted to say, so, um, <laughs> you know, 
and he remembered every detail, everything. It was like scary, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then I said, oh, and, and also remember, he said, as after my name, he said, credit creation, mm -hmm. magic words. So then I said, oh, well, well uh, would you venture to comment on my paper? You know, fair enough, especially since you remember so extremely well. What does he say? He says, can't remember, turns around and walks away, doesn't even say goodbye. What? <laughs> so what can you conclude from this encounter? Well, I concluded, well, you know, he, he knows my name. He knows credit creation. He remembers every detail. So it's clearly, you know, there must be a reason why he remembers so well. But he claims he doesn't remember and walks away like, in other words, he didn't want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Possibly because he didn't want to give me even more information than he had by yeah. even the few things he said. <laughs> so I, next thing is, I back in Tokyo, I, I checked out with this Reuters 3000 system where you could check all sorts of publications, including all the Federal Reserve publication, all the speeches of Alan Greenspan. And so I just put in keyword credit creation. I mean, that was him saying it. I hadn't said it. You know, I had said nothing. I just said, Richard Verner, I believe you've read some of my research. He came out with it. So let's see. He clearly seemed to know this concept pretty well. You know what I found of all his speeches and publications, which were a lot. How many times has he used the words credit creation during yeah. his entire time at the Fed. The word count, the hit count was zero, never, exactly never. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Now, then I went beyond. OK, we need to go before he joined the Fed. Oh, bingo. There he did publish it. In fact, it's his, 90, I think, 1967 paper in this book by, uh, was it what she called, Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand, you know, is the editor and there's various chapters and he has a chapter which is about gold, interesting, and about central banking and about credit creation. And if you put these words together, you know what the storyline can only be. When you have central banks, they create too much credit, money creation, which creates boom bust cycles. He criticized the Fed for the 20th bubble and the 30th, uh, 1930s depression. And obviously gold is a, is a hedge, you know, that's safer yeah. money. That was essentially in a nutshell what he was saying. But he, he mentions credit creation quite a bit in there and how this, this process um, moves the economy, creates the boom bust cycles that we've been talking about. Already in 67? Yes, yeah. No, I, th I think it's 1967. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> but, you see, so he knew a bit too much. Then he was offered a job at the Fed. And obviously, he decided never, ever to mention the words credit creation. Why? Because they were linked to the credit creation theory of banking, which has been swept under the carpet for decades as the fractional reserve theory and also the present day financial intimidation theory of banking has been propagated yeah. and all the textbooks are full of it and they they should not they were not supposed to mention the old credit creation theory of banking so the money creation powers were well, well hidden gas lighting <laughs> <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.